Peace and blessings to you. Thank you for joining us on Law, Life Applicating Word, Daily Devotionals. I want to look at the book of First Kings. Turn to me, turn with me if you can, uh, to the book of First Kings, chapter number 18. I'm going to start reading at verse number 41. Then I'm going to share some thoughts with you uh, for today that'll, you know, prayerfully be of aid, helping you, encourage you, inspire you, invigorate you, or whatever you need to do to make it through. Elijah, I mean, uh, first Kings chapter number eight, chapter first Kings chapter 18, verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up, eat, drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink. And Elijah uh, went to the top of Car Carmel, Carmel. And Elijah went to the top of Carmel. And he cast himself down upon the earth, put his face between his knees and said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there riseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And so what I want to talk about on today and the topic of, of this devotional is something that I heard listening to uh, recordings in one of our meetings by a man uh, named Danny Young. Danny Young is very encouraging, very inspirational. He, uh, he, he reads a lot. He knows a lot. And, you know, th these are the type of people that I like to listen to him, Myron Golden. Uh, you know, I have my favorite preachers. That's that's very aged in, in, in wisdom and knowledge in the gospel. My pastor, Dr. Woodson, love listening to him. Uh, I, I like being in the room, whether virtually on video or in person, with people who know way more than I do. And so Danny Young is one of the people that I get to listen to every Monday morning in our Zoom meetings uh, for symmetry. And he says something that really, really stuck with me and really sticks with me to this day. And what he said was people don't survive in this business or fail in this business that we're in because they don't do the right thing long enough. They don't do the right thing long enough. And so this, this scripture, when I woke up this morning and you know, sometimes I have planned on what I'm going to do. The devotion was on. Sometimes I don't, it's just, you know, God will, I wake up and God will, will, you know, place a thought in my head or something to go with. At any rate, I woke up this morning thinking about that. People fail because they don't do the right thing long enough. That can be on your job. That can be in your own business. That can be in the church. You know, that can be uh, your place as a kingdom citizen. Uh, a lot of times people get tired of doing what's right because it seems like the people who are not putting the effort that you're putting in is doing better than you are or the people who's not concerned about the kingdom of God appears to be doing better than you are. And so the first mistake that we have already made is comparing our journey with somebody else's journey. You know, who, who knows what was given to them? Who knows how it was laid out for them? But the thing is, my purpose is is generated by God and God alone. My purpose was created by God and God alone. My journey was established by God and God alone. That is why it's so important, Proverbs 3 and 5, to, to uh, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all of your ways. And he will direct your path. He is the creator of your path. He made your path. And so he will he will lead you down your path. He will guide you down your path. Amen. And so that's the first mistake that some of us make is comparing our journey, comparing where we are with somebody else. You know, we graduated from the same school. We took uh, we had the same major. We, you know, came, we, we made the same grades. So why are they here? And I'm here. Uh, it has nothing to do. Your journey has nothing to do with what they're doing. So stop comparing yourself to everybody else continue if you know uh that you're doing the right thing see that's another thing some of us may not know if we're doing the right thing if you don't know you're doing the right thing if you don't if you don't have a, a, a firm establishment uh if you're not firmly established in in 
you know what your purpose is then you you know you you just you just you know just you you you're everywhere you're just flinging and flanging it uh flangling everywhere trying to figure out you know what your purpose is trying to figure out where your uh you know what your path is that God has carved out for you and then some don't care about the path that God has carved out because they think they can do it on their own and maybe experiencing some success at doing things on their own but ultimately it's it's best to see as pastors would say see which way God is moving and move with him and so uh as Jenny Young was saying people fail people come short uh, and this is the thought that I'm, I'm going to take today. People come short because they fail to do what's right long enough. Now, here in the passage of Scripture, uh, many of us know it, many of us don't. It, it is good to go ahead and read the chapter uh, in your intentional reading time. Remember, I'm stressing that. I'm stressing that. I'm stressing that. Be intentional about reading your Bible. Be intentional about studying the word of God, not just having memory scriptures. Memory scriptures are wonderful, but the scriptures that you remember, study to know what they mean. The Bible instructs us to study to show ourselves approved unto God. Workmen need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Know the scriptures that you remember. Know the scriptures that you read. You know, study your Bible. It's only gonna help you again, again. People will start reading the Bible and stop reading the Bible because you don't understand it and you come short. But as I said before, do the right thing long enough. People come short because they don't do the right thing long enough. If you're a Christian and you know that studying the word of God is the right thing to do, then just keep doing it. When I, first, I can remember when I first started reading the Bible, I was getting absolutely nothing out of it. But I stayed at it and, and kept reading, kept trying to study, kept commentaries and everything of that nature and then it, it just seems like as a period in my life wasn't a day but a period in my life where everything just started clicking you know and, and the word had, had started being applied to my life I can remember that season in my life and I was like well that's what the Bible meant it's such and such such and such sometimes you read things but life's experiences will 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 be your commentary for you and so uh, this is this is the battle between I like to call it a battle. This is the battle between Elijah and the prophets of Baal when he uh, called on, told the prophets of Baal, you know, if, if you know, who's ever God is, is real will uh, send fire onto the altar. And so the, the prophets of Baal go first. They call on their Lord and, and probably one of the most comical parts in the Bible. I don't know if it's supposed to be funny or not is when Elijah told the prophets of Baal, he said, perhaps maybe your God is asleep because Elijah knew that we serve a God who never slumbers nor sleeps. And he's like, you know, your, your God's not answering your prayers. Your God is not sending fire from, from heaven uh, to, uh, to the altar. He says, so maybe, maybe your God's asleep. You know, maybe you should, um, you know, try him a little later on when he wakes up. But anyway, Elijah does something, um, you know, that, that's against the laws of nature. He pours water all over the altar and then he prays and I think it's in verse 36 he, he prays to the God of Abraham Isaac and he says he actually says Israel here he doesn't say Jacob he prays to Abraham Isaac and Israel and he's 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 not reminding God but he's establishing establishing himself in God saying you are the God of Israel you are the God that I believe in you you are the God of of, of your chosen people and he calls on, on God. God sends fire from heaven. And even though the altar is soaking wet, God sends fire from heaven and sets the altar on fire. <clears throat> and consequently, the prophets of Baal are all killed. And so now he's talking to his servant Ahab. And he's telling Ahab, he's, he, says, he says, go ahead and eat. Go ahead and drink. Muster up your strength. And he says, because I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Uh, there was a drought and anything, anytime there's a drought long enough, things are going to die. And so Elijah is saying, you know, just, just getting a revelation. Elijah is saying, I hear the sound of life. And, and I want to share that with you. I'm speaking to somebody who thinks you're dead. Your situation is dead. It's passed away. It's not going to help you. It's over. I came to tell you this morning that it's not over 
it's not dead, it's yet alive. And if you continue to do the right things long enough, there is a sound of the abundance of rain. There's a sound of whatever it is you need in your situation that's going to help you through. It's coming and it's going to happen if you don't quit. You should reap a harvest of blessings if you don't fail. This is more like a sermon. I'm going to I'm going to preach this next year sometimes, God's will. And so Elijah tells Ahab, he says, go up. So Ahab goes up. He does what's right the first time. He goes up and he says, I don't see anything. And he says, go up, you know, seven times. So the, so that's the key. My time is up. But that's where I want to leave you on today. Don't stop doing the right thing. Do people fail? because they don't do the right thing long enough. This will be in sermon form. There's no way I could get all of this in in uh, the amount of time that we have devotion. We'll look for a sermon real soon on this very topic. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today's devotional. Thank you for the listening ear. Bless us to be doers as well as hearers of your word. Lord God, keep us, Heavenly Father, give us the energy and the encouragement, Heavenly Father, to keep on keeping on, Heavenly Father. I rebuke the spirit of quitting in the name of Jesus, help us to do the right thing long enough. Give us the fortitude to continue to do what's pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen.